Friends, welcome to the 101 freeway heading south from Thousand Oaks. We just got done shooting the round the block review of this, the 2017 Nissan Pathfinder, the fancy platinum edition. Uh, so why don't you and I take some opportunity as we're driving back down to the old South Bay uh, and do an Ask Moto Man. So um, let's do our first ever on a freeway. Okay, so as we cross back into Los Angeles County and Westlake Village, and being that I spent the better part of a week with a baby buggy, let's start with a fun question. This one comes from Roshka Manning Ross. Roshka Manning Ross. Uh, my apologies if I have butchered your name, but Roshka comes in from Guilford, Vermont. A little fun fact here, I actually spent a year of my life in Vermont, uh, and Roshka lives in southern Vermont about, well, 30 miles south of Brattleboro or something like that. Anyway, Roshka has a great question. Uh, he wants me to choose between three cars. Uh, there's the obvious, there's the BMW M4. Uh, then there's the second obvious, the uh, Mercedes C63S. Uh, and then, wait for it, the RS A5. Now, the A5 presents an interesting twist to Roshka's question, because if I'm remembering the new cycle correctly, Audi did say they're going to bring either the current gen or I think the next gen A5 to uh, the U.S., which is incredibly good news. And you know, I don't really love Audis that much, um, but I love the way the Audi A5 looks. Um, and then one little fun fact I didn't tell you, we had an RS7 on the show and there was a little bit of a camera problem so we didn't get you the episode on that car, but oh my god, that car was, all I can say is Santa Maria Madre de Dios. It was, that engine is the basis for uh, my favorite version of the Continental, which is uh, the V8 uh, GT3R, which is going to be coming up soon. We have an episode of Tech Review, as well as a full first drive review. But I, anyway, let's put that aside. His question is, which would I choose? Now, the very simple answer, Roshka, is, of course, I'm going to choose the BMW because it's the only one you can get the manual transmission. But I have to give an honorable mention to the Mercedes. Why? Because I love the engine. And I know Roshka did say in his Facebook question here that he would prefer the C63S as well because of the same reason. The engine is just, there's something about that eight cylinder engine that's in the Mercedes that just sit, it's not the driving dynamics, it's not the speed of the car, I don't know what it is, it's the, I think it's the way that car develops power, that engine develops power, that I love it. And I would have a hard time saying no to it because of the transmission. And not that that transmission is bad, it's just I gotta have three pedals, I just gotta have three pedals. And as much as I love the concept of an RS version of an A5 coming to the States, I don't know if that's gonna happen, I would love to have that. But I, I don't see myself ever buying an Audi. I, as much as I really respect what Audi has been doing as of late, I, the BMW and the Mercedes just edge out the Audi because they are by design ground up rear wheel drive platforms. I know this is the Neanderthal answer here. But really, the question is what would I choose? <laughs> And at the end of the day, I probably would choose neither because you're talking a C63S. I actually built one before I got on camera here. A C63S, the way I want it, is like 80 grand, maybe even more. And for 80 grand, I would have an incredibly hard time saying no to a secondhand 911. That's, and especially coming from me where, you know, as Lotus people, we are brought up to hate all things from Zuffenhausen and that's just our religion, but oh my God, I, 80 grand, I, it would, to me, it'd have to be a used 911. If you're forcing me out of those three, definitely the M4 with a stick. Anyway, Roshka, hopefully that answers your question. It was definitely a fun question. That's why I wanted to have some fun with it. And a reminder to you guys, I like to answer these questions either as what would I do, or I turn the question around to you guys and I ask you, 
How long do you want to keep the car? Where do you live? And what are you going to do with it? In this case, the question was, what would I choose? Now let's press on to the next question. This one comes from Ahmad Childress, Ahmad Childress in Los Angeles. And his question is, can he have a Cadillac CT6, but one with two doors, and instead of it saying CT6 on the back, he wants it to say Eldorado? Um, let me have a think on this one. Two things. Uh, number one, I'm going to be seeing both Bob Boniface as well as Dave Leone in like less than a month. So I am definitely going to float that idea past them. Uh, and number two, if they say yes, you get one and I get one. It is just that simple. And you know what? I think I want Dave's uh, 640 horsepower uh, supercharged engine in mind. So you get the V6 twin turbo and I get the V8 supercharged. Let's make that deal. Uh, anyway, hopefully that answers your question, Ahmad. Now let's press on to the next question. This one also related to Cadillac. This one comes from Lee in CLE. Uh, Lee, who is Greek, so we like Lee. Uh, he's from Cleveland. Uh, and Lee poses a very interesting question. What do I think of the design direction of Cadillac? Now, let me unpack this in a couple of areas. Number one, I have been very upfront that I love what uh, Bob and the guys in Cadillac have done, Brian Smith as well, some of which have moved on to other areas and big jobs at uh, General Motors. But I love what they have done. They've taken that art, science, design, and they've matured it. They've softened a little bit, especially when you look at the current CTS and the CT6. I, you know, I've seen the comments you guys left in that episode, and some of you really, really, a lot of you really love that car and love that design. And a lot of you, like I'd say about 40%, not so much loving it. I would argue you guys need to see that car in person because there are design tricks in that thing that you don't get until you see it in the flesh. If you see it in a picture or even in like an auto show, you don't quite get it until you see it on the road. And unfortunately, you really don't see many of them on the road. So the, the answer, really this part of the answer to Lee's question is, I really do like the design direction of Cadillac. Now, there is a little a little hint vice, a little asterisk I want to put there. The car that they showed at um, what was it, Pebble Beach? I, I don't know what you guys think, but to me, that looks like a carbon copy of an A7. I, I, it was pretty, but there's no imagination in that car. It's not interesting to look at. It's, it's a design that's been done already. With a CT6, hasn't been done already, especially when you look at, look at the height of the wheels and how low the hood line is on a CT6. No one else is doing that. The last time someone did that kind of design was like Portu when they did French coupes back in the 30s. I kid you not, go and take a look at a Portu coupe. Type it into, uh, into Google and you'll find out what I'm talking about. So Cadillac with art and science, or at least the matured art and science, I love the direction of what they're doing, especially, oh my God, that El Mirage, that is the height of beauty. It's, it's a design that has tricks like the, the, the hidden, the height of the wheel as opposed to the height of the actual hood line. It's got all those tricks in there, but it's got classic coupe slash GT proportions. You could put that car in any line, in any fancy valet, at any flash hotel, in any region of the world, and it will stand on its own. And when I say stand on its own, that car would stand up against Anything from Rolls-Royce, from Bentley, and even some of the latest designs that are coming out of Mercedes, which have been very aggressive, and especially when you look at that new Mercedes S-Class Coupe and Convertible, they've taken it from just like a, a like sort of interesting Mercedes two-door to something that could be timeless. And that's exactly what the El Mirage is. It is timeless with classic GT proportions, but most importantly, it has like a fresh modernity to it you don't see in all those other cars. That's what I love so much about it. Now, this, this A7-like car, I'm not that excited about it, but I have spent a good amount of time talking with Clay Dean and Frank Sacito, and they run advanced design at General Motors, so all the cars you and I have seen, like the El Mirage and the cars that came before it and even after it, um, 
they it was Clay and and Frank and their team. Now Frank, we are just getting up uh, over the hill here. We're coming from the valley and we're gonna go over the hill and go back into L.A. Just over that way in Burbank is where Frank's studio is, and that's where all those cars were done. And Clay came up with this concept of a journey, and that was this whole the the three separate cars you've seen. Uh, the the first was. The, the original idea, which was the four-door convertible, this old stately car, but with, with the modernity to it. And then they decided they wanted to go into the arrival. And that's where we got into the Pebble Beach car from last year. And then now it's, okay, let's take a look and see what that means in terms of reality. So he's, he's come up with like this story arc. It's amazing the storytelling that Clay, Frank, and the team are doing. I gotta get them on, on the show, the two of them together, to tell you the story because I do it no justice if I were to recount what Clay said. Clay is one of the smartest designers I've ever met in my life. And I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but in like off the record conversations I've had with Clay, he has hinted that his designs are not just about design direction, meaning where the family is going, but he even wants to get some of the advanced design into the segments that Cadillac wants to start competing in. So like right now, they're in the three segment, the five segment, the seven segment, and obviously large SUV. But if you think about it, there are some other segments they're not in right now, like that fastback with a sedan, or um, not so much something as large as an Escalade, but something in between the XT5 and the the Escalade. So he's he's like he's a combination of a designer, and he reads trends throughout the industry. Anyway, I am, I'm going way off on a tangent here. I'd rather have Clay come on answer your question, Lee, because he can give you more insight into the reality. You asked me what do I think of the design direction of Cadillac, and I think they are doing a great job. I am, I will say this A7 thing is giving me a little bit of pause, but overall I'm giving the team a bit of a pass because the past four or five concept cars, just stunning. Uh, anyway, let's press on to the last question, which is also a really fun question. This comes from Sheldon Wu in Illinois, and Sheldon, he's younger, he's like, I think he's in college or just getting out of college, and Sheldon poses a great question, and I absolutely wanted to share this with you guys. Sheldon has a budget. A grand. Now, you, you know I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. I don't want you taking debt for cars. You never lease, all that kind of stuff. So Sheldon obviously takes that to heart. He's like, I got eight grand. I want to get a fun car. Yeah, I live in Illinois. I have to deal with the winter. I'm assuming, Sheldon, you do have like a beer with a heater. But he wants to get a fun car, and he's got three choices. And his three choices for his eight grand budget is uh, a Z4. Okay, fine. Uh, an RX-8 big fan of Mazdas, as you know, but what you probably don't know is I've told you I've owned Fieros and Supras. I did own an RX-7 in college. Loved it. One of my favorite cars I ever owned, and like, I would say not just one day, but in the near future, I'm going to buy myself a 93 RX-7. I basically, what, two, three weeks ago or something like that, a guy told me to screw myself because I gave him kind of too low of an offer, what he thought. I thought all the money in the world for a 93 RX-7. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, RX-8, also a good choice. Then wait for the third one. You ready for this one? A Porsche 944 Turbo or a 968. I love this guy, Sheldon Wu. He is the man. Um, and now he's very realistic because he said, well, the 968 and the 944 Turbo could be cheaper than the eight grand, but he is willing. He understands that it's an older car, yes, less money, but he's thinking he's gonna budget at least $1,500 a year to keep those cars on the road, and I completely agree with you. Uh, my, his question was, what would I choose? I don't think you really need to spend a lot of time thinking or guessing what I would choose. It would absolutely be the Porsche. And I wanna, I wanna share with you guys why I picked the Porsche, and there's really three reasons for it. Um, it's cool looking. Uh, like, I didn't like the 944 when it first came out. I felt like the front end with those like tack on like black bumpers that they had within like the, the body color bumper, it looked weird. Even though I, f I felt like they were trying to fix a bad design in the 924. Um, 
But when they went to the 944 Turbo, they had this beautiful organic shape with these stunning driving lights like almost lifted from a Ferrari directly that was beautifully sculpted into the front of the car. It transformed the car, but it still had a crappy interior. Then, late 944 turbos, they put this more organic shape on the dash, and that made it to the 968, and the 968, it like, it took bits from a 928 almost, which I love, definitely getting one of those at some point. But I really, like, the 968, you're gonna laugh at me, the 968 convertible is probably one of the, one of my favorite Porsche designs, front engine Porsche designs. I just love the way it comes together. It just works, and it divorces itself from the 924 of which it's really based on. So I pick it based on, okay, it's cool. Uh, number two, I love the look of the cars. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I talk money with you guys a lot. And this is where I gotta bring up money again. I would do the 968 or the 944 Turbo for no other reason than these will appreciate. You will lose money on the Z4. You will lose a little bit of money. Actually, depending on how new of an RX-8, you will lose some money on the RX-8. The 968 and, and the 944 Turbo, they're what's called in the classic car world credit card cars. I know it's funny coming from me, a Dave Ramsey disciple, credit card cars, but the, the term means the car is so cheap you can buy it on a credit card. Not that I want you to. Um, and I feel like that's not going to be the case with these things. And I'm kind of predicting, but I'm also telling you from reality, I know some people that own, I know one guy owns a stunning 944 Turbo. He has already been offered like 10 times from different people at least double his money, at least. And he didn't buy it that long ago. And the same thing with 968s. I, the bottom was a long time ago on those cars. I feel like the bottom on 968s and 944 turbos was a couple of years ago, especially 944 turbos that are really nice. Um, so long and short of the story, Sheldon, love the way you're thinking. Love that you're taking eight grand cash, you're buying a car, and love that you're thinking realistically that you're going to have to put some money and fifteen hundred dollars a year in actual repairs. Not we're talking this is above and beyond insurance, oil changes, regular kind of stuff to keep it on the road. But overall, I think you're going to at least keep pace with inflation, if not make some money, and you're going to turn that car into a better car down the road. Big caveat: make sure you have a beater with a heater because I don't. Those cars are going to be so valuable to the point where I, I do think you might do a little bit of damage to your value if you drive it in the winter. Um, and keep in mind, look what's happening in the Porsche market. The 911s went crazy. They're starting to come back down to reality just a little bit. I still think non-special 911s will continue to come down to more reality, but like 930 turbos, stuff like 9, 1967, 911 soft window, target, they are stratospheric. They'll never come down. But like uh, a 996, they're not going to continue this ridiculous stratospheric rise, but, but they're still going to keep pace with inflation. And that's what I want you to ride on. So with that, I want to turn this around to you guys. And I want you guys to help Sheldon here because I love the way he's thinking about this. Um, and I want you to answer between his choices of uh, the Z4, the RX-8, and the 968-944 turbo idea. And are we forgetting something? Like, of course... I, I've held myself back in not saying you should buy a Lotus. Uh, but there, I'm sure there's other cars that you guys can make a suggestion. Again, keep in mind the same parameters. He lives in Chicago. He's going to drive it, what, six, eight months a year, and it's got to be eight grand. So uh, come up with your ideas uh, and let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV All Word, Motoman TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes and Google Play. And did you know we are live on five, count them, five uh, international airlines, Emirates, uh, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin America, Virgin Australia, and soon American Airlines as I'm watching planes land here at LAX. Uh, and number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. So you're probably thinking, why did you answer that guy's question about the Cadillac? Well, I wanted to bring up uh, Ahmad's question about the Eldorado, number one, because I want one. And number two, I wanted to give a shout out to Ahmad because Ahmad is pivotal in this show's history because he was the editor 
at our first ever distribution channel, Crave Online. That's where we launched way back in the day in 2009. He was the one that greenlit our show. So uh, I would love for you to join me in thanking Ahmad for being one of the key factors in starting Moto Man. So thank you, Ahmad. Until I see you next time, Bishpeta.